Hello. This is intended to be a brief overview of the MACE 2 rugby tablet from Juniper Systems, the Geode Real-Time Submeter GPS Receiver, the EasyTag Mobile Software, Professional Mobile GIS Software, and EasyServe Post-Processing Software. And if you, we're going to skim over a lot of um, details, and we're just going to talk about it in high level. So if you need more details, feel free to visit our website at www.juniperassist.com or contact contact us, and we're happy to uh, talk with you about your specific questions or your specific project. Um, we're going to look about look at this in the context of a traditional GIS process workflow, where you plan your project, you have some data that you want to view from a GIS and view that in the field. You're going to select your field data, the optional step of post-processing your field data, and then exporting your data to a file and ultimately to a GIS system. So in the first phase, you do have the option to create a custom data dictionary. And this is where you can define custom attributes for users in the field when they collect point polygons and lines. So if somebody's going to collect a fire hydrant, for example, you can define that to be an averaged point and then have them answer a series of questions um, that you want them answered about that, that fire hydrant, for example. You can do the same for points, polygons, lines, and call them whatever you want. It has a lot of features and functionality. It allows you to take photos during the data collection process or include data from externally external devices such as um, Bluetooth, barcode readers, you know, barcode readers from a Mesa, for example, or, or some other uh, device like a laser rangefinder. Um, so you can use custom data dictionaries. You don't have to use that. You can just use default data dictionaries, which just allow you to name your points, generic point ID names, and give them a basic description. You can also upload your own high-resolution maps if you have those, um, you know, and it accepts all the common file formats that you would expect. Um, you can also just, there's a little tool that allows you to clip uh, web maps, you know, right from, you know, Google Earth, for example, and Bing, for example, and you can use those as underlying base maps if you want your users to see those in the field. You can also copy over uh, shape files to the Mesa 2, and EasyTag will let you view those shape files out in the field. So if you want those shape files as a layer in your, in your software, when they're out there collecting data, you can have those visible as well. Once you're out in the field, here's kind of a little view of how it looks, and I'll give a demo here in a moment uh, I'll let you see it on the handheld button. Um, in this case, here's a custom data dictionary. A uh, user has mapped a bunch of fire hydrants, um, and you know, through this process, they were guided through questions for each of those fire hydrants on you know, what they needed to ask, um, do. They might have had to take a picture, give it, a nice, give it an ID name, uh, you know, or scan a barcode or something like that. But it's kind of an idea of what it looks like. And, you know, EasyTag really is a professional GIS data collection software in that, like I mentioned, it can do point polygons, lines, averaged points. It can accept data from a GIS, and then it exports data that can be uploaded to a GIS. It has navigation features and a lot of other features and functionality um, that you would expect in a professional mapping software. Here's a picture of the Mesa 2 rugged tablet and the geo receiver. These two connect through Bluetooth together. You can do a cabled option, but most users just connect through Bluetooth. It's very easy to do. This user has a pole, and they have the Mesa 2 connected to the pole with the geode. There's a number of other ways you can carry uh, the, the geode in Mesa. Um, in this case, here's a, a shoulder strap with the Mesa. And that way, the user can just let it drop and grab it when they need to enter data. This is just a $15 camera monopod, collapsible monopod pole that uh, put into the back of a camelback. And then that way, the user can be collecting data hands free. Um, you know, they enter data and then let it drop, and their hands free, and can be using the hands to do other work. Um, this is also another popular way to carry the geodes. This is our smartphone tray. So here you see our rugged CT4. Android device. Uh, this device has now been replaced by a newer version, the CT5, but the smartphone tray is still available, and you can put your own Android uh, smartphone there as well, if you have one. Um, and it just connects, and that way you can kind of have a, a 
an integrated style device. So once you get back to the office, you do have the option to post-process your data to achieve submeter accuracy. Um, the geode receiver by itself in real time um, is truly a submeter device. It, it typically gets about 30 to 50 centimeters, um, and that's stated in 2D RMS, so that's with a high confidence of 95% you know, to sigma. Um, so it is really a, you don't need to connect up to any kind of networks or it's just using SBAS corrections that are free. Um, so WAS, for example, in North America, um, it's excellent in challenging you know, terrain under tree canopy, around buildings. It really is a submeter device and you don't have to occupy a position for a long period of time to get uh, high accuracy on the device as well. Um, however, if you do want to enhance your accuracy even more, or if, you, if your project requires it, you can post-process using EasyServe. Um, this software, very powerful, has a lot of icons, it's very feature-rich, um, primarily intended, you know, all of these icons are for land surveyors, for example. Um, but for GIS people that are mapping submeter accuracy, really it's pretty straightforward. All you do is you point to the file that you collected and brought over to your desktop. You then just push this button here, and then EasyServe automatically goes off and finds uh, the closest base reference, reference station to wherever you collected your field data. And as a reminder, the real-time accuracy is about 30 to 50 centimeters. We typically see with the geode. Uh, this is 0.3 meter radius circle, so about one foot. Um, and you see these are 60 second averaged points, um, landing mostly within that one foot radius. Um, and that is, again, is stated to the RMS. With easy serve, once you post process it, we typically see about 10 centimeters. So that's that same one foot or 0.3 meter radius circle. That square there reflects the, um, the size of the geode receiver itself. So you really can increase your accuracy even more by post processing. And there's a lot of great features that EasyServe can bring. Once you've post-processed your data, you can export to common file formats such as CSV, KMZ, Shapefile, you know, so for Google Earth, Shapefile for your most GIS, and then AutoCAD DXS as well. And now at this point, I'm going to switch over and show you briefly on the Mesa 2 what EasyTech looks like. Bear with me. I'll put this down, and so what you see now, this is my Mesa 2 screen here in my office, and in the office as well, I also have a geode submeter GPS receiver. Now, that geode is inside the building here and just kind of sitting over by a window, so it's not a very good GPS environment. Um, but for demonstration purposes, it will work quite well. So I just double tap on this easy tag. Easy tag opens up. I'm going to make it a little bigger here. It opens up to this white screen. Um, you do have the ability by just pushing uh, view. You can turn on or off various layers that you might have loaded onto your device. So I'll turn one on here. So here's some web imagery that I clipped from Google Earth. I then say File, Connect, and the geode in my office, the blue light on it just connected. You can see it connected through Bluetooth. Again, not a very good fix. I'm only seeing five satellites inside the building here. Um, with a PDOP of 4.2 and a uh, uh, pretty terrible accuracy of, a, you know, 11 feet or so, or 10 feet, um, you know, so 3 to 5 meters. Um, but again, just sitting right on the windowsill of the building. Um, now I can zoom in on this imagery, you know, and make it a little closer if I like, you know, that kind of stuff, and, you know, pan around and move around. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say File, and then start survey. And you can give it a name, survey name. I'm just going to leave it default generic name here. And say OK. So now I'm in a survey, and all of this data will be available for post-processing. 
So the more data for post-processing, the merrier. So the longer the survey is opening, the uh, higher chance for post-processing that your data will be more and more accurate. So how this works, there's just, you see these icons here that have become active. So this yellow tag, that's how you actually map a feature. So right now, this line indicates that I'm in line mapping mode. I'm going to want to change that to an averaged point. So all I do is I touch that, and then I select the one I want, and I'm going to select the point average. So now I'm in point average mapping mode. So then I just hit the tag button, the yellow one there. And you'll notice it's doing the five second average here. Here's where I can define some, you know, push some zeros to scroll through the questions if I was using a custom data dictionary. In this case, I don't, I'm just taking the point, point ID. I don't want to enter any description, so I'm just going to say OK. And now I've just mapped the point. And now with this background imagery, you know, sometimes it can be hard to see, you know, depending on what, uh, how big I decided to make my icons for the point average. You know, in this case, they're, they're kind of left at their default. But it's a little bit hard to view. I can change the zoom level. There's various ways to do that. Um, but, you know, if I change it here, you can kind of start to see. In fact, I'll turn off my layer here. You'll be able to see that point. There you see, I'm zoomed in really far, and you see that point sitting right there, point zero. You know, I can I can go and change that, and select that point, and you know, um, get some information about that point or navigate to that point by pushing these little green uh, uh, arrow buttons here. But that's how you basically map things within EasyTag. It's pretty straightforward to use. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's quite quite powerful and has all the features and functionality you would expect from mapping. At this point, I'm just going to push File, Stop Survey, and then File, Exit. Now, I would go right onto my, into my computer, and I would navigate first off to, I would just open up a, I would just browse to Doc, you know, within my documents, got packages, easy tag, surveys, and right in there is a list of all the survey folders that I have, and this would be all the data set for the survey that I just took, and so I would just right click on that and copy it to a USB stick, or if it was docked, I'm in a docking station, then I could just transfer it directly to my desktop if I wasn't using the Mesa 2 with my desktop computer. So I would just transfer those to my desktop computer, and now I'm going to switch back to my screen, my screen in the office. And share my screen here. And by the way, this little on top tools icon, here's the spot where you would create your data dictionaries. You can click your web maps and do a few other things, such as licensing. You can also export data directly here. For post-processing, if I wanted to post-process the data, I just open up the EasyServe desktop app. I'm connected to the web. I just right-click here. I import my file. And this is some data that I collected earlier in the day. So the base station that's nearby has published its data, so it can be post-processed. And I just push the button here. Now it's going to find the closest base station to wherever I collected that field data. It's NAPL-1703A. These base stations are all over all over the North America and all over the world, actually. Um, so generally, there's not a problem depending on where you're collecting your data. You will always find a base station, and you can then. You know, one thing I like to do is just look analysis GIS feature summary have a look at the standard deviation for that point. In this case, it's quite good, 0.023 meters, 0.11 meters for the lat long standard deviation. So that's quite good accuracy. Very happy with that. I'm going to say tools, export, features, show where I want it to be stored. In this, in this case, I'll just choose Google Earth file format. Export the data. It's 
open that file in Google Earth. So here's some park data. If I select the feature, you're going to see if I had a bunch of attributes that I entered about that, it would be associated to this point. Um, you can see quite good accuracy. You know, standard deviation of 0 0.023, 0 0.11 meters. That's really quite good. That's how the post processing works. If you're interested in pricing, we'll go back to the presentation. So, in a you know, with a traditional GIS workflow, you know, you might get into a data clip. You know, if you want to get sub meter accuracy, sometimes you have to pay, or usually you're you're looking at survey type equipment. Um, sometimes that equipment, what we usually see, is quite expensive for the hardware, you know, the software as well, and there may be subscription fees for that. Um, so we're looking at you know potentially about ninety three hundred dollars. You know, with this solution, with the Mesa 2, the Geo Receiver, EasyTag software, and the post-processing software, um, really with the premium hardware that you're getting, um, you know, all of our hardware is built Juniper rugged, can be dropped, has a long warranty, works in the, in the heat, in the cold, um, it can be submerged under water. Um, so you're getting quite a good deal for that, uh, that setup, premium kind of setup. If you would like to save a little money, Depends on what you're doing, but if you don't need the real-time accuracy, you can save money by just buying the Mesa 2, getting the GPS model Mesa 2, and getting a little bit of an upgrade on your receiver. Um, and you know, we recommend also using a small little external antenna that comes with it. Um, you then have your Easy Take software and Easy Serve, and you can save about another thousand bucks. And this method, this if your goal is to make an accurate map. This is a great great option to do that. If you don't need that real time uh, accuracy out in the field and you don't care about that, then this is a great option. If you do need that real time accuracy, then you should get a geode receiver and then go that route. If you are post processing three or more GPS receivers, then you can buy an EasyServe open license. And when you buy that license, you can download EasyServe to as many desktops as you like. Um, you can post-process as many GPS receivers as you like. There's no recurring annual fees, and uh, you just use a virtual key. So one user can post-process at a time, but as you saw, it's quite quick, and um, generally there's not any kind of a conflict um, you know, between users that are post-processing at the same time, and that's the one we use here at Chief for Systems in the office as well. Another way to save a lot of money is if you don't need to post-process, and you have your own Android device, or you want to use one of our Cedar Tree uh, rugged tablets, the CT7G, for example, um, or our CT5 uh, rugged smartphone, you can pair that with a geode receiver to enhance your own accuracy. So you can use the geode with Windows devices, Android devices, or Windows mobile devices. Um, you then can find an Android app, for example, and typically those costs, you know, a couple hundred dollars or less. We have some good recommendations, and you know, based on on, on um, what you're trying to accomplish. Generally, with those options, you you don't get all of the, the features that you find within Easy Tags. So you may not be able to import your data from a GIS and view that as layers out in the field. You might not be able to export to you know the various file formats. You may not have navigation features or functionality, or you may have some, but not all of those combinations. So, but if that's all you need, and if your project only requires certain features, that may be accomplished through one of these types of apps, and maybe a really good option to save a lot of money and still get really high accuracy. Um, so, um, those are some some good options to receive you know, better accuracy on a budget. Um, if the Mesa 2 Easy Tag and Easy Serve um, isn't isn't what you're looking for, so again, we're happy to discuss your project and make recommendations. You can contact us at www.junipersys.com and have a good day.